And so Allah says, He has never changed the state of a person until they change themselves. So until they want change for themselves, until they make a move, then Allah will make the move. Allah says, walk to me, I'll run to you. But you've got to do something. But don't you find that even with all of the negativity, I mean, the amount of negativity we've got now is unbelievable, right? You just go to somebody and say the word Islam, they think terrorism. That's how much it's been conditioned. But even now, you're talking about a level of conversion and coming to Islam yeah. that is still the fastest growing religion in the world. Allah will make this religion enter every household because it's the truth. And what Allah says in the Quran, truth will stand clear from error. If you speak the truth, Allah says, provide your evidence. This is not a religion of blind following. Allah says, if you're truthful, okay, let's bring your evidence. We bring our evidence and let's deal with the matter as intellectuals. When it goes, Allah Hakam of the Cathar, Hatta Zutum Makather, Hatta Zutum Makabin, Yamakab, Kalas of Talamun, Makalas of Talamun. It says, your pursuit, your pursuit of the worldly pleasures divert you until you visit the grave, and then you shall come to know. Again, you shall come to know. You shall see with a surety of sight. So Allah's warning you that the glitter of this world will divert your attention. But at what cost? So the, um, the, there was an example of uh, somebody who won the lottery. It was the biggest amount that they won in the UK. And they had a heart condition, which meant at any, at any second, their heart could stop beating. And nobody knows the cure for it. And the guy said, I would give up everything. Yeah if somebody can solve, solve that, that problem. problem yeah. And this is why the example is so important because, yeah. I mean, this guy that was here before, the fact that you've got eyes, then he was saying, why should, are you looking for thanks? And actually, that example is a good one because you should be thanking yeah. for someone who's given you a lot more than a That's thousand right. pounds. Yes, yeah. subhanallah, subhanallah. But like I say, it's, it's like Abbas said, you've been given that anyway. You, you know, we've got a Satanist, I think. We've got a Satanist, he's got eyes. He's got eyes, yeah. Um, and he's got all those blessings but the hereafter is doom mm. complete doom mm. so we, we all have we've all been given this thing now but Allah's promising extra he's promising more you know and at the same time you, you're getting the the the, uh, the possibility to connect to the one who created everything mm. you know subhanAllah you know people say oh I'm a Christian and I've seen the Bible working my, well, I'm a Muslim alhamdulillah and I've seen Islam work in my life I've seen the Quran work in my life I've seen the social construct it's just another level you know, for some people, I think to themselves, look, forget whether you believe Islam is true, just become a Muslim just to benefit from the social construct, because that's what you're needing. I, I can see you're lost in life, and this will benefit you in such a way that you'll, 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 come, to, you'll come to the realization that this must be from something bigger. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because there are people in this world who need Islam who don't even realize they need Islam. Can I ask a, a question that... Um, <clears throat> I'm Muslim, I, you know, I... But I... are you Muslim? Yes. Oh, Hamza, how long have you been Muslim? Sorry? How long have you been Muslim? Uh, just over a year. Mashallah. You must have loved that talk about hijab, haven't you? And carry on. <laughs> okay. That's the next time. I have, no, sorry, I have the shortest attention span. You said... Um, I have the shortest attention span. Okay. But I've just stood here for the last, how long? Hour? An hour and a half. Oh, Mashallah. He's, so he's so eloquent. He's yeah. so eloquent. He's so eloquent, that guy. When no, he speaks, I, I actually, it's like... Uh, I actually blabber. The real eloquent one is Dr. Imran. <laughs> He is eloquent because he's concise. I tend to stretch things quite far. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, that's probably a lack of, uh, you know, uh, precision on my part. But Dr. Imran, mashallah, he's on another level. See, one of the questions I was going to ask was, um, uh, so I, I spent many years, so I read the Bible first, I went to a Christian school. And I actually read the Quran in English after I read the Bible in English. So I read the, the, the Quran in Arabic when I was 11, finished. So when you read it in Arabic, you don't understand yeah, it, right? Yeah. Um, but then one, when I read the Bible first and the Quran, and if you go to my house, you can see I've got, um, you know, the, the Bible with bookmarks everywhere. I've got Quran with bookmarks everywhere and highlights everywhere. One of the questions that, that, that is, some people have answered it, and I think some people have answered it better than others, right, is, we believe that God knows everything, right? So God is all-knowing. God knows when you're going to be born, when you're going to die. God knows who you're going to meet, how you're going to meet them. So God knows all of these things. So if God knows everything, God knows that somebody will turn into a bank robber, somebody will be a rapist, some kids will die. 
And the question is, if God knows all of these things, it's a bit like somebody knowing the end of a film. Why would you have a film? Okay. So I, I have. Uh, I'm going to quote Dr. Imran actually. Yeah. Because you know, well, actually, he, he got it off me, but he concisely put it in. Well, I, I get I get so, it off hijab, and uh, well, I said, he had I a very nice explanation. I, I said, but, 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 I, I said it first. So, so, yeah. ba so basically, it, it doesn't happen because it's written. It's written because it happened. Hmm. Do you understand? It's written because it happened. Yeah, it doesn't happen because it's written. It's written because it happened. So Allah knows what you're going to do, and that's what's recorded. So Allah knows if someone's going to be a bank robber. He doesn't, just because he knows he's going to be a bank robber, doesn't mean he's part of the process of becoming a bank robber. It's just they, they've chosen, that's what they're going to choose to be. And he knows that. And when he knows that, that becomes part of what's written down for him. But do you think the fact that fate is written, and these things are... But you see, one of the things that you missed also in your definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he's all wise. Yes. See, so when we have the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're all inherently the attributes of Allah. So Allah is all merciful, but Allah is all wise as well. So a, a child dies from cancer doesn't mean Allah is not all, uh, all good. Because Allah is all wise, there's some hikmah, there is something behind that. And as Hamza Zorsis often says, uh, we have the pixel and Allah has the picture. Yes. So we judge things very superficially. From the little piece we see, yeah. yes. we don't see the whole thing. But why would Allah let a child die from cancer? Well, I don't know. But Allah says Allah is all wise. I know, but you don't know. And all will be plain to you when you are resurrected. And this is not this is not blind following because in life there are many things that you or I don't understand, but we accept inherently because the source that the decision or the information comes from is a trustable source. So we say, okay, in neurology they're saying you've got to inject this and this does that and the brain does this and then the good person gets better. I don't know how any of that works, but the source is a trained neurologist. There seems to be enough papers published, uh, peer review right and uh, you know what I'll have to probably go with that I have no knowledge whatsoever how it works what it does what it what doesn't happen right I trust the source so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran Allah is just Allah is fair you won't be treated unjustly you won't be treated unfairly what good or bad happens to you Allah has given us the formula yeah but going to the fate thing yes Allah says in the Quran he's never changed the state of a person until they change themselves so that, that's an indication right. that you're in control. You can also change. This is what I'm saying to you. So Allah yeah. says, He has never changed the state of a person until they change themselves. So until they want change for themselves, until they make a move, then Allah will make the move. Allah says, walk to me, I'll run to you. But you've got to do something. Yeah. You've got to, you know, when uh, Moses parted the sea, yeah, what did he say? Oh, Musa, strike the water with your stick. Well, it wasn't a magic stick. It was just the effort. And then Allah will part the sea. That's a beautiful yeah. example, actually. Yeah, you, you, you have to make the effort. Yes. There has to be, you know, and we know that Allah says He He raises and lowers our risk according to our effort, according to our dua. See, if, if your fate was fixed, what's the point of dua? Why would you ask Allah for this and ask Allah for that? If it's written, it's written, isn't it? If you're you just sit back and think. You just sit back, well, whatever's yeah, written, it's written for me. But when you understand that whatever you do and whatever effect becomes from it is what, is what gets written. But because Allah's already seen it, it's written. it's written. So he's basically yes. watching the script of the movie that um, you've written, <laughs> effectively. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, 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 it's a mad concept when you think about it. You know, the human mind will go, when you try to think about it. But I always like to think that if I didn't choose to become Muslim uh, 19 years ago, then I, I don't think that Allah, when I was born, said, this guy's going to be a Muslim in, in 2001. Allah said, no, I know this guy can become Muslim in 2001 because I've seen that guy take his shahada in 2001. You understand? When you think like that, it's not too much like that. It's still like that. Well, it's always going to blow your mind. Well, you know, one of the hadith that really comes to mind, it's very interesting, is that a sahaba the companion hadith? comes to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and he says, why should we do any good works if it's already written? Mm -hmm. The Prophet wasallam said, excel and exceed in good works and know that that was your qadr. What is it? See how profound, uh, you know, subhanAllah, what a profound statement. Excel and exceed in good works and know that was your qadr. So, qadr is one of those, uh, oh, subhanAllah.
This is why you need Islam. <laughs> By the way, I think um, what you, uh, we don't come here often. We've only come here a few times. And um, uh, the way that you deal with things, we love. We watch your videos and stuff on, oh, on YouTube. And the way that you dealt with Hatoon as well, for example. I, I think when I come here, when I listen to you speaking or somebody else speaking, you, you actually stand there to listen, like a khutbah, right? And then you get these idiots who come in to shout, and all they're doing is taking away from the, the what, what, fact what, that people are getting the message. People, right? Many people have said to me, oh, Speaker's Corner's not what it was now, it's all drama. Well, I challenge anyone, watch EF Tower, show me the drama. I think it's when people can't articulate their arguments. They shout and they... You know, they did the angry. same thing to the Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. When he would give the revelation to the people, yeah. they would sing and ring bells and they would make noise so the yeah. people would not hear this the message. What these guys do. Yeah, yes? yeah. This is exactly what they did. What you find is that when people can't deal with you intellectually, yes. yeah. they, they stoop to the level like Hatun and these people. Yeah. 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 Because they have nothing left, really. Yeah. But didn't um, uh, Mohammed Hijab made a good point as well? He said that um, if Islam wasn't relevant, then you wouldn't have all these That's right. people yeah. That's trying right. to yeah. That's right. dis you know, That's disrupt. Right. And, I, and I challenge anyone, when you come to the Speaker's Corner, you'll see Christians ranting, um, you'll see a atheists just trying to troll, and you'll see the Muslims reasoning. Yes. You said that to me. Yeah, yeah we're always reasoning, we're always rationalizing. You know, yeah. Like that lady, the crazy one with the In thing. a really calm manner. Yeah, like, yeah. Jesus loves you. Yeah, come, come, tell us. Tell us why. Yeah. And she's like, oh, well, because most people just ignore her. She's yeah. a mad woman in the park. And that's what yeah. I said to her, is this what it does to you? You become a Christian and this is what you do. Yeah. It's yeah. Well, it's like, why do you believe these things? Because I, I see everyone as a victim mm. in the sense of they're just products of their environment. And, you know, they might have been brought up in a certain way and it's not not come to me, even the ones that come to me aggressively. Oh, your brother was a pedophile, Islam is this, you kill us, 9-11, ooh, relax, ooh, who told you that? Oh, well, yeah, it says you can kill them. It really means to say kill, I can kill people. But don't you find that even with all of the negativity, I mean, the amount of negativity we've got now is unbelievable, right? You just go to somebody and say the word Islam, they think terrorism. That's how much it's been conditioned. But even now, you're talking about a level of conversion and coming to Islam. Yeah. That is still the fastest growing religion. Well, imagine no, with that much negativity. No, what, what, what's in? The reason I'm just talking about why we react the way we do. Mm. I know they've got a caricature of what they think Islam is. And for them, caricature of Islam is something else. Crazy, pedophiles, terrorists, killers, intolerant. Right, okay. And so you're looking at this craziness and you think we're that. And you're trying to ascertain why would anyone want to be that? Unless you're crazy yourself. And that's where you came to the camp. But what I have to do is first say, well, what do you think Islam is? And then you bring this off your shoulder and this is what Islam is. No, that's not Islam. Let me show you what Islam really is. Because I'm not surprised you're reacting the way you are if you think this is yeah. Islam. But when I show you what Islam is, you'll realize, well, wait a minute, that actually kind of makes sense. And so sometimes um, we have to stop being reactionary. I think Muslims are too reactionary. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Too emotional. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The way they, you know. Defensive, I would oh. say as well. And we don't need to be defensive. Always apologetic, always defensive, yeah. always getting it was getting offended yes. and this is why um, I think you because you responded to a question earlier about um, the age of the prophet's wife and the way that you explained it I mean I, I always because I come here sometimes to to listen to the argument so I can explain them to people and so when you talked about the time and the fact that you're conditioned now and the, yeah. the, the problem with you know present is and currently you, you, right. you judge everything in the past right. by based on today's right. That's right, and it's, and, it's, and it's known as a fallacious argument for that very same reason, yes. because you can't do that. And, and the point is that, one of the points that you raise, that you know, uh, the expansion of Islam despite the negativity, there, and this is not just the negativity, it's a hundreds of millions of dollars industry to dismantle Islam from Europe and from the world. Even her tomb's got yeah, yeah. the they, body they've all, there, right? they've all got money coming in, right? Somewhere. And despite that, subhanAllah, Allah says they, tr they, they think they can distinguish, uh, extinguish the light of Allah. But Allah... I just want to say salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam alaikum. Salam, that's all. Salam alaikum. Allah will make this religion enter every household because it's the truth. And what Allah says in the Quran, truth will stand clear from error. If you speak the truth, Allah says, provide your evidence. This is not a religion of blind following. Allah says, if you're truthful, okay, let's bring your evidence. We bring our evidence and let's deal with the matter as intellectuals. 
discuss, let's discuss. Because, and this is the beauty of Islam. It doesn't say, oh, it says this, you just got to believe it. No, 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 it says this. These are the reasons why you believe it. And if you're saying it's a lie and it's a, it's a made up religion, if this Quran has not come from anyone other than Allah, then okay, bring, uh, bring your evidence where it's come from. It challenges you. And that's the, that shows the level of mashallah veracity and confidence, alhamdulillah. That's why I remember something Hamza said. <laughs> Hamza said, I'm a bit of an argumentative person. I don't know where he got that idea from. <laughs> but he goes, with Islam, alhamdulillah, I got the best thing to argue about. Why? Because it's haq, it's the truth. And when you have that, alhamdulillah, it doesn't matter what they come and they throw. It's your right to do it. Uh, it's our right to defend and we give intellectual reasons. And alhamdulillah, I mean, the numbers of people, I mean, every stream, mashallah, we do, other, every other stream, mashallah, either somebody's taking shahada or we're getting messages that, oh, I've been looking into Islam, could I do the shahada offline? You know, and this is despite the millions and millions of dollars being spent to vilify Muslims and destroy Islam. But you know, they talk about um, Islam spread a lot because of the Prophet and the trading. Yes. Because the Prophet would go to different places and trade and people used to see the Prophet and they'd, they'd say, I want to be like this man. You know, what's, yes. what's this? So they, they got that yes. kind of thinking. Well, Indonesia is a classic example for that. Indonesia, there was no army that went into Indonesia. Mm. It's the largest Muslim country in the world today. But the traders went there. They saw that these people were just, they were fair with their trading. And they said, whoa, what's this? What's going on? Yeah, but the, the irony is this, Christianity today might be a bit come by up, but you never used to. And if you want to talk about a religion spread by the sword, Christianity is that religion. Mm. You go to you know South America, the Spanish right. conquistadors, yeah. uh, the way they forced Christianity on that nation, the way in Africa Christianity was forced on the, the slaves, the way um, even in Europe you burned at the stake if you didn't believe that particular version of Christianity. Do you get me? So you're, you're forced to believe it by threat of death. Well, I had a taxi driver who Christian who converted to Islam because we had weekly conversations in the taxi and he'd come and pick me up because he'd see that I'm you know, going to work and stuff. So um, because he started, the first question he said to me was, um, he saw my name and he said, um, so brother, you're Muslim? And I said, yeah. And he said, so you don't believe in Jesus? I thought, here we go. You know, you always do that, here we go. And they said, what about, you know, Mary? What about this? What about... So when you start talking about what's relevant to him, like Jacob, Joseph, Isaac, Adam, Zachariah, John the Baptist, you just name it. And he'll say, what, you believe this? And you believe in the return of Christ? And you believe in... The... He thought for a long time that I was Christian. He didn't even know, you know, for... He knew from the name, but from the conversation. So, you know, sometimes it's not, I'm, I'm not even that knowledgeable, right? You know, I, I'm kind of, you know, you talked about yeah, yeah, the layers. We're, we're all down there. Like we're all down there. Where you guys we're are, all right? down there, brother. Alhamdulillah. But, but, no, I'll give you an example. I'm recently on, online now. I'm responding to something about the Kaaba. And, uh, oh, the Kaaba, the cube. Oh, this is a pagan symbol. Yeah, it's a pagan symbol. And yet you have Jewish people rabbi at the uh, Wailing Wall and even in the time of Moses mm. who used to wear a cube on their arm and on their head yeah. and they wrap it seven times yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the phylacteries yeah, as an as uh, indication of monotheism mm. so just people just don't know well, also in Mecca we, we replicate the steps of Abraham yes we do we, we, so, well the Hajj is all about Abraham yeah so, so the fact that Abraham is the father of yes, all the religions yes, and yes. the fact that we're not going there for that's right Prophet Muhammad no, no, we're, we're not going, going there to, for but well, this is going down to people's understanding they're thinking this is a new thing. Even making phenomenon. microphones in cubes. A, a pilgrimage in the desert. <laughs> like a pilgrimage in the, in the desert, for example. If you read the Bible, it speaks about Moses doing pilgrimage in the desert, David doing pilgrimage in the desert. What is this pilgrimage? Where are they going? What are they doing? As if, you know, recently they've discovered that Mount Sinai is actually in Arabia. Yeah. There's one guy, a really crazy Zionist Jew called Abby Lipton, yeah? Oh, yes. Lipton. I don't, you don't see him around, though. No, no, but he believes that Mecca was the place where Moses worshipped. He believes that uh, when Moses went to the, when he fled Egypt um, and he stayed with Jethro, yeah, whose name was Jethro, and Yathrib, which is Medina, um, was um, named after him. And Medina was Midian. 
And so and so he points to the fact that Mecca belongs to the Jews. This is his belief. Yes. And this makes a mockery of the idea that Mecca was always been a pagan place of worship that all of a sudden um, was hijacked and then combined with previous revelation to make it a new thing. I mean, we, we have pre-Islamic poetry that writes about when the first pagan idols were brought to the Kaaba and by whom? So we know there was a time that the Kaaba didn't have any pagan idols. So what was it then? Mm. So, but it's about people not knowing. Mm. And so when the more you inform them, the more it kind of starts making sense to them that actually this religion does seem kind of monotheistic. And then when they try to make this claim that the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is relaxed, no, Genesis to the end of the Old Testament kind of marries up with what the Quran says. It's you guys in the middle that are, are the old one out. Yeah? The, the, Muslim, the Jews believe in the one God, the Muslims believe in the one God, but you Christians in the middle. You know, I mean, today we had a Christian who, he went to another level. But you, you know, you need hard to get a Christian today who will agree on, on a matter. And they won't, they won't accept what the scholarship says because it goes against their narrative or it doesn't make sense to them. And they're, they're just making up the religion now. Do you get me? Well, I, 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 I had a few weeks off work and, and, and when I was busy going to work, I wouldn't stop for the people at the tube stations that had Bible very smartly dressed. Yeah, yeah. But they were every tube station in London. And I thought these people must be very highly funded and there must be something going on here. Let me speak to one of them, right? So I spoke to one of them at my local station. And I said, look, I'm, really, I'm going to be really ignorant. I don't know what it is that you're preaching, but I can see it says Bible. So, so are you Christian? And they said, no.